Well, today I want to talk about computer vision, which I think is one of the most disruptive technologies for cities and for jobs and for startups with the biggest like, implications for, for security. Um, I'm a 35 millimeter, roll your own, dark room in the basement kind of guy growing up. Uh, I started a, a company in the 90s that got the seminal patent on photo sharing. Um, I just uh, started and barely sold um, <laughs> a company uh, called Ditto that was using AI and deep learning to look at social media photos and try to classify what you could see in an image and try to find the best images for TripAdvisor. Um, and now I work at a glasses company, so I'm totally focused and fascinated by, by eyes. So three parts to my talk. One is a little bit of background, sort of the history of vision, the history of eyes, how we see and how we correct for vision. Another one is about sort of new AI eyes and edge computing, what Microsoft and Amazon are doing to try to put more seeing at the edge of the cloud. And lastly, a little bit about sort of what could we do with this, these wearable things that 50% of us have on our faces or Sometimes we wear contacts. Uh, so, so that's sort of my structure this morning. So thanks, thank you, um, Evolution, for inventing eyes about uh, half a billion years ago by a flatworm, Mr. Planarian. Um, why do you think we don't have flat eyes? Anybody? The answer is up, up there, which is, if you can recede the photoreceptor deeper in a hole, then you get directionality. Then you can see where the, your predators are coming from, it, the deeper, the deeper the, the so that's, that's why we developed deeper eyes with lenses in order to uh, find the bad guys. Uh, the keenest natural eyes in nature spot prey a long way away. Um, eyes continue to evolve, and I'm sort of interested in that metaphor of our own eyes as they continue to evolve. Uh, the owl's eyes actually are held in place. They're these big tubes, and they're low light adapted, which actually took away their ability to move the eye at all, which is why they, they move their head. Uh, our own eyes have not uh, need to evolve more. They're pretty bad. In fact, half of us need some sort of corrective vision, uh, uh, as, especially as we grow older. We all need corrected vision. And this was a big problem for, uh, uh, well, for, for Warby Parker, where I'm working now, but also just for, for how, how do you reliably understand someone's visual acuity? Well, Herman Snellen, back in 1962, invented optotypes, which are standard charts that you stand a very precise distance away from in order to measure the, that visual acuity. They come in lots of flavors. I love the pre-letterate one for kids, uh, where if, if they can't recognize the letter, you can just uh, say, can you recognize what the animal is on line nine, and in other languages. And really, eyes are one of the big healthcare tragedies today. They're, uh, according to the New York Times, a recent article, three and a half billion people uh, need correction, which absolutely uh, influences their safety and quality of life. So at this glasses company, we sort of became known for buy a pair, give a pair. So we've given away millions of glasses. So if you buy one, one is donated. Um, we're also known for home try-on. So people order five lenses. We send you the lenses for free. It's sort of like Zappos for glasses. Um, and then you can decide which one you want, except if you don't have an up-to-date prescription, we're sort of screwed because we lose the sale. So we invented uh, an app called Prescription Check that knows precisely how far back you are uh, from a screen using computer vision, and then we put the Snellen charts, actually a Landolt C chart, on the laptop screen, pair it with the phone, and then you do the eye test. And then by law, we must send the data to an optician, ophthalmologist actually, because it's telemedicine, and they issue a new script. So this is live in 25 states, including Massachusetts. Uh, it's a lot cheaper and a lot faster than going to an eye doc. Um, I won't show how it works. And the, and the, the new script is issued by, by a doctor. Uh, we beat out weed maps uh, on the, <laughs> in the app store for the top charts. Woohoo! Uh, it's a big deal for us. Uh, <laughs> Uh, our business is probably in jeopardy because uh, there are inventions to try to uh, replace the lens of your eye. Um, it's basically like one of the most popular surgeries is cataract surgery where they put a new lens in your eye. There are people that are working on uh, putting lenses in your eye where you can see three times better than 2020. 
Um, and uh, we'll probably put eye all the eyeglasses company out of, out of business, so that's probably our, our future. Um, <laughs> so the next part I want to talk about, what can computers see and what does that mean for, for jobs and for us? As a, um, can I get some water? Is that, oh, there's some right there. Thank you all. Uh, I've been intrigued as a photographer that most of my job, uh, most of our jobs, is being done automatically for us these days, right? People are increasingly putting more cameras around in the environment, putting more cameras on their bodies, and sort of photography is changing from this thing that you did volitionally to intentionally take a picture to something that's being done automatically for, for us, like this um, GoPro on top of this uh, racer, um, ski racer. And I think increasingly there will be new services spun up by, let's say you want, better, you want a ski lesson brought to you by somebody who makes skis, uh, probably that will be baked into uh, that hardware because of computer vision. I've been wearing uh, uh, life logging cameras for the last couple of years, capturing my life in 10 second increments. Um, uh, and it's interesting what you learn if you make a flip book of your day every day. One of the things that I've learned, it's sort of like having a Fitbit, except much more interesting, because you can see how much time you're inside versus outside, how many people you interact with, how often are you interacting with people versus screens, um, how depressed are the people that you're interacting with, which is probably like a sign of your own depression based on mirror neurons. Um, we actually calculated like a smile score so that you could see like whether you're more depressed today than based on how, how other people are reacting to you. Um, but I think the big thing that's changing is the classification of not only what's in the images, but also where things are in the images. So you can think, like the big, big change that happened because of the web was words became clickable. Now we know which pixels in an image are occupied by which things in the image. So individual pixels become clickable and actionable, which I think is the, like, the fascinating thing which, which we're starting to see across social media now, which is you can click on your friend's Instagram photo right over there to figure out what, which restaurant, at, which, which table at the restaurant was, was that, or which um, pants was she wearing, I don't know if you're shopping for women's pants, or, <laughs> or which, um, which car that you could rent is over there in the photo. So all of these things become actionable with computer vision and with segmentation. Um, this uh, shows you just sort of what can be found in the cameras around Amsterdam, you know, all the way down to which suitcase, which shoes, et cetera. And I have students at, at the Media Lab at, at MIT where I'm teaching which, uh, who are trying to like embed cameras in more and more stuff, like in jewelry. This is sort of a wonky ring that a student made last year, um, <laughs> or in glasses or in clothing uh, in order to help understand what you're looking at, what you're dwelling on, what you're pointing at. This is probably the opportunity for Snap um, is, you know, as they're thinking about embedding cameras in, in glasses, it's a big indicator of interest to know what you've dwelled on. It probably reveals a lot about people's passions or, or who they're passionate about. So I'm fascinated by like, the impact of, of all of this computer vision and classification and localization on jobs, the jobs that we don't want to do as much. Um, as a parent, I can vouch for like, needing some parenting help periodically. Um, you know, having, com having cameras with computer vision um, help, help keep, keep your kids safe, uh, obviously help you uh, have conference conferences with other people instead of driving, uh, moving the things that we order online around the world. Um, and I think of these eyes as sort of infinitely patient eyes. So not only are they taking pictures on their own and working on their own, but they have so much more patience than you would ever have just to look down at the pot or whatever you're growing and uh, and see, this is a, a startup out of the group that I'm in a, at the Media Lab, Sprouts.io, and it has a camera that just looks down at the lettuce all day just to see how it's going, you know, and just to change the temperature, the regulate the spritz of hydroponic, aeroponic juice that's spritzed on the stuff. So you get much faster growing because you have these very patient eyes. Um, this is a patient eye in a toaster by this startup in San Francisco called June. 
It also answers the question about how do you sell a $200 toaster for $2,000. Um, you put a camera, you know, like a $5 cost of goods camera in it. Uh, but, but with some computer vision, it can figure out that, yes, those are cookies, and yes, you're burning them. There's a lot of pot themes in this. Um, <laughs> so you can also save a lot of dollars on choppers to find people that are lost. Uh, you can also embed cameras and paintbrushes to be able to sample the world around you and paint with that pattern or that color. Um, uh, how many people have a camera in their doorbell these days? Nobody. Wow, a couple people. Huh. Do you, do you, uh, do you, have you learned anything interesting? No. <laughs> no, like interesting strangers entering the house throughout the day? Um, oh, okay, right. <laughs> Uh, well, one of the other projects that we're doing with a very special type of camera, which is the one that came out in the iPhone X about this time last year, um, it uh, projects an infrared dot pattern on your face with, and has a special infrared ca camera that looks at that Apple-specific dot pattern to unlock your phone. We access this in order to be able to find you the right glasses based on the strange um, contours of your face. So we look at pupillary distance and cellion height, so nose bridge height, and be able to figure out exactly which glasses from the collection are likely to fit your face or have been purchased by people that have faces like yours and not returned. So we have like ground truth data about the glasses buyers, but, um, but we don't keep the data. We like we we promise <laughs> we don't. <laughs> uh, so, but it's it's cool because it's like a one second um, experience where you hold up your phone, boom, the glasses that that might fit you are right there. So, other jobs that these cameras are doing. Um, actually, I just made my daughter try um, uh, a computer vision service by a company called Zozo, where they ship you this black suit that has fiducials all over the, the skin-tight suit, and then you, you go like this and rotate around while it, your camera is here, and it then measures every part of your body and will ship you shirts that fit you perfectly, as long as you don't change. Um, so, you know, interesting to see sort of how cameras that know things about depth are changing how we fit things to bodies, not only faces. Um, cameras uh, from Orbital Science are looking at uh, parking lot traffic to try to um, have a perspective for hedge funds uh, that, you know, whether JCPenney is actually uh, serving fewer people this year than last, yes. Um, and it's interesting that, like, these photos are being taken automatically, and they're super patient, the cameras, and the photos aren't for people. The photos, the photos are, are uh, we did a trash can at, at the Media Lab um, where we just put a camera on the inside of lid of a trash can and it would just notice what you threw out, sort of like supply chain management for your house. So it would say like, oh, another yogurt, maybe he wants more yogurt. So like it would just try to, it would propose things to your Amazon list based on, based on your, your uh, outflow. But you know, it's an, it's, to me it's sort of an interesting mix on the, you know, looking at the effluent, whatever that word is. So I'm intrigued by how many cameras are in these Amazon stores. Um, does anybody know exactly how many cameras? I've heard no, no, that there are, there are um, thousands and thousands of cameras, almost one per SKU, like one for every Snickers bar. I can't believe it, but they have just, the whole thing is populated with cameras because they're so damn cheap and it's the best way to figure out whether somebody's picking up and stowing something in your, in your, in your uh, bag. Now, another fascinating um, impact to cameras that I've been thinking about for a while is shopping. And so I think we are inspired by our friends who buy stuff and post pictures of it on social media. And if you could spot those things that are worn by celebrities, or friends that are celebrity-ish, that might be an interesting way of, of, of preferring something for yourself. So we wrote a classifier to be able to say, what, what, the, what are those glasses that that guy's wearing right there? And it sort of classifies and then proposes exactly which, which, um, which style frames in our collection are most like that, that celebrity. Um, and my last company, we were doing um, another thing that seems sort of uncannily um, creepy which, which is, if you go to Bing and search for Romantic Hotel Boston, the results for any particular hotel won't be the standard photo carousel. It will be those photos that are classified 
by some AI as being the most romantic-ish photos of that hotel. So like with a little bit of scent of what your interests are, we can change the photos that we show you that characterize a restaurant or a hotel, you know, kid-friendly or romantic or edgy or um, party, you know, party uh, whatever restaurant. And we would show different photos based on that little bit of sense of interest, um, which can just show you like no one human could do that across all photos that are all user-generated content. All right. Maybe the creepiest one, just for last. How many, does anybody have um, a, a look at, by Amazon, an Amazon look camera um, where, they, where they dress? Anybody? How many people dress near where they sleep? Wow, I thought you all had like private dressing rooms or something. Like, I don't know, like my closet's sort of close to my bed. Anyway, this is a product from Amazon that came about a, about a year ago, and they're trying to offer style advice based on, like, you just say to Alexa, you say, like, take a picture of me, and then it will compare two photos, and a neural network will find the photo of the, of the clothes that look best on you, based on what? Something like, like your age, ethnicity, gender, um, other things, and also based on current style trends. So they're building a neural net to have an opinion about your outfits, which to me self seems like it should be Gucci or Dior or LVMH companies, not Amazon to trust for, for style advice. Um, and it's also interesting that the big clouds are spinning up hardware that is just responsible for doing this. Um, Amazon launched DeepLens, and uh, Microsoft with Qualcomm has a an edge camera that, where the neural net can be local in the camera so that the data doesn't have to go up to the cloud for analysis. Okay, last category. Um, let's think a little bit about what we should do with um, uh, the sort of the next, the next evolution of eyes, which is, which is uh, um, to me, it seems like the biggest opportunity for, for computing. Um, do you remember the, the, the movie uh, Her? Um, you know, he had sort of real-time uh, agent interaction with his ear, but he also had, uh, uh, so the fiction goes, uh, sort of a visual, a visual eye for her so that she could see all of his experiences. And the friction in the, in the drama came when, she, when he couldn't see her, because she, you know, anyway, I won't we'll give it away for you. Uh, <laughs> so I think today we sort of have the wonky version of a lot of these AR um, technologies where you can look through the data and, and, and see information so it doesn't just float in space. Um, uh, it continues to get better. Um, I think it will impact not only how the Kingsmen do their video conferences, um, but also more things. Uh, you know, Nearer term, many, many companies have AR uh, initiatives that are happening with um, co-presence, where someone can see what you're seeing and tell you which things to do in which order, or just superimposing labels on things so you don't have to see exploded diagrams. Uh, I have a brother-in-law who's a firefighter in New York, and he's very excited about being able to see through smoke. Seems like a good, a good application with not a lot of security problems. Uh, this is a company spun out of the Media Lab that's working with uh, road cyclists. Uh, they have a team at the Tour de France that are trying to, to sort of float information um, that would be superimposed in your field of vision, but, but uh, perceptually floating on the road to give you information about your body and about the race. Uh, and VCs are investing a lot in the category based on all of the applications around this sort of next generation of eyes. Um, and my question for you today is, so, like, what do you want to see? Like, what, do you, what feature do you want in these next generation glasses from Warby Parker? I have a poll coming up in just a second. Um, so here's some options. Uh, one thing you might want to see is to smoothly blend, you know, great, you know, blue, what kind of whale is this? Blue? Uh, anyway, super, superimpose, um, you know, sort of gamification features uh, on, on, the, on the real world in order to fuse how we work with how we play, maybe gamify and make, make both more entertaining. Um, Apple is supposedly working on uh, a pair of glasses and has filed many patents uh, to help with wayfinding around cities. Uh, this is a speculation from Cult of Mac of that these, these glasses by Apple might come in ro rose gold. Uh, there's a new teasing ad campaign all over New York and Toronto right now by this company 
uh, spun out of Thalmic Labs. Do you remember Thalmic? They had something you could wear on your, on your upper, on your forearm that would detect muscle movements, but they're doing uh, a pair of glasses called North um, that no one knows exactly what they're doing, but they've written patents um, that include um, uh, heads-up display, eye box expansion, so scanning laser projectors that, that project information on your eyes. Uh, Bose is doing something really interesting as well. They, they've said, let's just do AR in the audio space. So let's make glasses that embed uh, AirPods. So you have directional drivers that are aimed right at your ears. I've tried them, they sound fantastic, better than AirPods actually. Not better than the, the over-ear stuff, but still uh, fantastic sound and also a microphone so you could talk to your personal assistant all day. Um, uh, Smith, the outdoor brand, has teamed up, teamed up with Muse to do EEG reading, since it's such a good place to grab EEG uh, sensing data. So you can do with their low-down focus glasses. That's like the like the trendy name. It's uh, for only three hundred and forty-nine dollars. You can do sort of a Zen. You can do meditation throughout the day and get feedback on whether that's effective. And to me, I think one of the most compelling. Uh, <laughs> Applications for, for AR is, is DR, which is to take things away that you don't want, that you don't want to see, like Coke ads. Um, if you want to try this, there's a, a project at the Media Lab that's using GAN's uh, generation, generative adversarial nets uh, called Deep Angel. It's deepangel.media.mit.edu. And so you can upload a photo, one of your own photos, and say, take out the people or take out the dogs or whatever you want to take out. And it will. Uh, it will generate more information in those areas that, um, uh, that will surprise you. So it will do this, this thing, which we all saw at Black Mirror, which is um, if you really don't want to see somebody anymore, um, you could just turn them into fuzz. Uh, so <laughs> I love this, this example for diminished reality. So um, those are some examples of, uh, <laughs> yeah, it takes it out of your photos forever. <laughs> um, also, you can't cheat. Uh, see their children. So I think eyes are, you know, they're, they're, they're compelling in their history, but they're also compelling in terms of how they're serving us when we tape them up and stick them to our bodies, clothing, uh, helmets for skiing and into the world. Um, and they also be the most compelling future platform for, for computing. Um, and so I want to ask you uh, one question, which is, can you show me with your hands, you get two votes, one vote with each hand, um, which of the seven ideas would you most like in future Warby Parker glasses? Or whatever, you know, whomever glasses. So I'll read through seven and then you can, then we'll vote. One is to be able to do head gestures that trigger if this then that buttons. So you could like do stuff <laughs> if, if you're Tourettean. Um, that's one. Two, Maybe it's more subtle gestures or something. Um, two, life logging, you know, putting a camera to be able to take snapshots to remember things uh, or movies. Three is about measuring activity or your emotional state. Four is to show peripheral ambient information. I had a company called Ambient Devices. We made these orbs, and a lot of information can be displayed sort of through a color or pattern that's not foveal, that's not in the center of your vision, but sort of peripheral. So that's the fourth idea. Five, music. Maybe steerable hearing, too. I think a lot of people that are hard of hearing would love to sort of be able to look at something and have really like super hearing with a microphone array. Six, personal voice assistant. Seven, just give me the full-on mixed reality whales on basketball courts future. OK, how many people for head gestures, the trigger if this then that buttons? All right, one. Um, <laughs> anybody for life logging? Life logging, being able to record videos? Yeah, good. Bunch. Um, measure activity or emotional state? Yeah, good. About the same, a little more. Um, peripheral information, sort of what Ringley does, except in your glasses. Good, about the same. Wow, these are. I'm not getting a lot of good, good uh, customer intelligence here, because a lot of the, <laughs> okay, playing music or steerable super hearing. Oh, you don't love that one, huh? Um, about the same. Personal voice assistant interaction, so you can whisper to Alexa throughout the day. We should, we'll talk later about your relationship with Alexa. <laughs> um, <laughs> and full on mixed reality, just give it to me. Just mess with my vision. Yeah, okay, 
Great. Well, thank you so much for the feedback, and thanks for inviting me to speak. Thanks.